Hello. Today I'd like to give my thoughts on the SV Boney 705C planetary camera. You will notice it's smaller than this astro, uh, astro photography camera here. And that's because it doesn't have a refrigerating system in it. That's the big difference between planetary cameras and regular astrophotography cameras. This has a refrigerator in it because it's designed to take one, three, five minute uh, exposures for six or eight hours straight. And the camera gets really hot. And so you have to have a refrigerating unit on here to keep it cool, to keep the noise down. Planetary cameras are designed to like, take little short videos of planets. Uh, which you can put into a program like PIPP and convert the video into individual frames and then put that into something like uh, Auto Stacker to make your finished product. And since it's not expecting you to, since they don't expect you to use one to five minute or longer exposures for six or eight hours, you don't need the air conditioning unit on it. I use this frequently for EAA, Electronic Astronomy, Electronic Assisted Astronomy. I've never used the cooling unit on here. And this camera has never gotten hot. So if you're doing EAA, uh, you can do deep space astrophotography with this camera without any work. My exposures are usually 5 to 15 seconds. And uh, I usually sit by the sit by the telescope while it's taking the pictures, instead of setting everything up and turning a little computer that's on the scope on, and then go inside, go to bed, come out the next morning, and, and go through uh, go through and uh, upload everything onto the PC. By the way, you can't do that with astrophotography because if you have five second uh, sub exposures. Eight or ten hours later, you're going to need an awfully, awfully, awfully big hard drive to contain all of those pictures. They run like 29 megabytes each or something. That's one of the reasons they use one to five minutes or longer on their subs. On EAA, you're doing live stacking. You take the sub, you stack it, take the sub, you stack it, take the sub, you stack it. So you don't ever use very much memory because you're not storing a whole ton of uh, large image files. Anyway, uh, this is very good for EAA. Well, I'll be honest about it. This is, in my humble opinion, about the best planetary camera made anywhere, anytime, by anyone. Uh, SV, it uses the IMX 585 chip which is a, a rather new chip. It reads a couple of steps for those of you who are me mechanically or ele uh, electronically or arithmetically inclined. Uh, it has 8.3 megapixels, about a medium size, 2.9 micrometer pixel size. It's fairly small so you get good resolution. And combined with the 8.3 megapixel, you get a fairly large field of view for a planetary camera. In fact, this has half the field of view of this. And this has this has a fairly good size field of view. Uh, it has a 90% or thereabouts quantum uh, efficiency peak. That means that when 100 photons hit this, about 90 of them end up uh, in my photograph. DSLR cameras usually have 40 to 45% quantum efficiency. Uh, as an uh, ADC of 12 bit, 14 bit or even 16 bit is, is ideal. You're not going to get that even on this. You're going to spend a couple thousand dollars for a camera to get anything better than that. Um, comes with a bunch of accessories, including this nose piece. If you want to use this camera in a two inch uh, focuser, you don't need the nose piece. 
uh, if you want to use a one quarter inch focuser, you need the nose piece. You will find, however, that in a lot of refractors, if you just stick it in there, you can't come to focus. You need to, because it's it, you have to use your diagonal. So you stick it in the diagonal, and then you can come to focus. About half my refractors don't have a long enough tube draw to come to focus otherwise. I don't like having a camera stuck in a 90 degree of anything. It's kind of unstable. So what I did was bought a little uh, extension. Yeah. So I take this, I screw it on here. And with the extension, I can plug it directly in there and not have to have it at a 90 degree angle. You will find with astronomy cameras that you end up doing all kinds of strange things to get uh, your cameras to come to focus. Because sometimes the draw tube's too short, other times it's too long. Uh, in my in my big uh, six-inch Newtonian, I can do this fine. In the if I use the one and a quarter inch focuser adapter, but if I take that out and just try to screw the camera into the focuser, it won't work. It's not far enough out. So for that, I have to have another extension. I went ahead and uh, bought a little extension for that and a uh, uh, filter drawer. It worked perfectly. In some of the cameras I have, they're real finicky. The 294, if you don't take the dark just the way the camera likes, you get all kinds of dis disturbing things. This is just about foolproof. Uh, I haven't ever had any problems with it at all at any time. Uh, once I could come to focus. I'll include a couple of pictures I took with this. Actually, I took about half the photographs I've taken were taken with this camera. Um, hundreds of them. It's a good camera. I suggest you buy it. Now, when, that, when, um, when I first bought one of these, it was like $395. And the ZWO version was like $500. And I sold mine like an idiot. Uh, and then I rebought it. It's now uh, $309, $309. That's a bargain for this, for this good a camera. You get good size field of view. So with this, I can easily get the whole moon in uh, into the field of view. Uh, in fact, I can with most any short tube refractor or any of my reflectors. And I got one that's like 650 millimeters, and I can come and get the whole moon in with this. Uh, it's very, very effective. It's easy to use. It's not finicky at all about your uh, darks and flats, and uh, uh, it's just a pleasant little, oh, and not with this one, but with some of my uh, telescope, or some of my optical tubes, if you stick, this weighs a pound and a half, stick this on here, you can't make it balance. It, it gets, you have to hang a weight from the front of the optical tube to balance it. This is only like two ounces, so it's very, very light and doesn't, it doesn't affect the telescope balance. I I know I've already recommended it. I'm going to do so again. I highly recommend you buy this camera uh, to go with your, if nothing else, to go with your grab and go uh, system. Uh, yeah, taking a ton of pictures of this. I'll include a couple after at the end of this video. I don't know what else I might need to say. 
you have any questions, you can put them in the in the uh, comment bar below. And uh, I guess that's about it. So until we meet again, happy trails.